Well, my name is Paul Ingram. Uh, the role of my church is uh, sitting in the pews, mostly. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, I teach some adult education courses for the, for the congregation on interreligious dialogue. And I'm Regina Ingram. I have been involved with the Muslim community at Point of Grace when they have activities there, uh, helping arrange those and setting those up and things of that sort. A businessman in the community uh, initiated a anonymous letter campaign uh, to suggest that the Muslims we, we were building a mosque, and that would be a center of Islamic terrorism. And uh, I got very upset about that, so I went around and uh, found out who it was, and or helped organize some resistance against him. And we had community meetings at Point of Grace where I did a couple of presentations on the history of Islam and what it taught um, because my Muslim friends wanted me to do it. Uh, but it's all been mostly done at Point of Grace as where community meetings go. And I'm really proud of that church because we've stood up uh, when other churches have not. Uh, attorney for the Muslim uh for the Muslim community. Yeah, for the Muslim community. A civil rights attorney. And yeah. he, and uh, uh, they made it very clear that, that this resistance had to stop and that uh, the uh, gentleman needed to make public apology. It, they, were large, they were large events. Uh, yeah. Uh, the first yeah. one, uh, we had we, uh, Terry spoke at it, and I spoke at it, other people, and we had a lot of people who were really negative about about Islam. And uh, uh, I made sure that there was a policeman outside every meeting because you didn't know there are there, there are nut jobs everywhere. And we asked several people to leave because they were just uh, causing trouble. Minds got changed. They heard conversations. We would talk, and then. We would break out in the groups and eat, eat together, and then Muslims would cook this wonderful food, you know, <laughs> using our kitchen. And uh, that happened three or four times. And we had three large community meetings like that. Just, just did it, you know, and the, the pastors at the times were very supportive. There was a huge groundbreaking And ceremony. we were at that. And it was wonderful, and uh, uh, people from all over came. And uh, uh, I don't know how to measure crowds very well, but I no, but it was it was it was, it was amazing. There must have been three hundred people there, and um, and Rios just was happy, and you know, yeah. and so. they did a ceremonial. Sh ceremonial shovel <laughs> and there were uh, the mayor was there a lot of politicians yeah, were there uh, and, yeah. and um, uh, but a large number of christians were there from different denominations i didn't know that would come so it was a, it was quite an event uh, i think there's a uh, feeling as paul said of trust and uh, uh, recognition that uh, we we are all talking to God. The, the kind of work you do is dialogue. And uh, a dialogue is a conversation in which you listen to the other person without imposing your judgments on what that person says. And you try to learn from it. Okay. Now, you, you, you're not always going to agree with that person, which is just fine. But you may come to a deeper understanding of your own tradition in that disagreement. We had a uh, workshop, an alliance workshop, down at Trinity uh, just before the pandemic started. And Terry was going to cap the attendance at 90. Well, we had about 130. And it was absolutely amazing. And people thought it was very worthwhile. And uh, a lot of role playing and uh, 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 just small group discussion about particular questions and how do you approach people that are different than you and uh, 
very worthwhile. And I know that they have offered several workshops online now during the uh, pandemic, and I have several friends that have been a part of those, and uh, they just are absolutely thrilled with what they have learned.